battle between the Mountain West and the pack intensifies. Hey, welcome back to the Mountain. JY here, going it alone again. Another huge day in the saga between the Mountain West and the pack. We have litigation to talk about. We have possible additions to talk about. We have dissolution rumors to talk about. Let's break this all down. Got to do another breaking episode here just for you guys. You know we do everything Pack, Mountain West, and Big Ten. Uh, but Steve is away again. I promise he'll be back tomorrow when we do our power ranking episode. Uh, but let's start with the biggest news of the day. That being the litigation where the Pack is suing the Mountain West mainly around these poaching penalties. Remember, we've talked about this a lot on the mountain, but remember that the poaching penalties were part of the scheduling agreement for this year for the football teams. It's laid out in detail. You can check it out on our channel. We have multiple different episodes where we talk about that. I'm not going to get into what that is, but we're talking about 50 plus million dollars determined by how many uh, schools actually go to the pack. Um, I know people don't like the word poaching. I get it. Poach this, take that, whatever. We call it a poaching penalty. It is it is what it is. Um, the PAC here is saying uh, that they were forced into this agreement uh, and that they were being exploited by the situation that they were in last year and the Mountain West was exploiting them. From a legal standpoint, it's about really two things. It's about antitrust laws in California that prohibit the restraint of competition or the restraint of trade, if you want to say that. It's also about these unlawful draconian penalties that were in this agreement. Now, if you follow us, you know we follow the ACC, the FSU, the Clemson saga that has been ongoing, and that sounds exactly like some of the things they've been talking about, the penalties, the exit penalties in that case, from the ACC to FSU. They're unlawful, they're ridiculous, call it whatever you like. Um, I do want to say this one is different. So remember back when the PAC had their first lawsuit here about a year ago, it was between uh, the parties in, in that lawsuit were the schools and the conference. The schools and the conference. In the ACC lawsuits, we're talking about the schools and the conference. In this litigation, we're talking about the conference versus the conference. So that is different compared to the two litigations we followed very closely here on the mountain. We were talking about specific schools back at the uh, back in those cases, and obviously the ACC is still ongoing. Um, I think right now, my opinion here is uh, it's just a matter of time until the Mountain West likely issues some sort of, of countersuit, uh, and whether that's a countersuit against just the pack or possibly a countersuit against the pack and different suits against the five schools that are leaving. I absolutely think you could see that as they counter some of this, whether that's done all in one litigation or possibly in separate litigations, we shall see. I'm guessing that ink is just kind of waiting to dry and they will be getting that out. That would not surprise me at all. That's what we have seen in this whole litigation model we're in through this wonderful realignment that we're all going through. Um, I will just say here, uh, I, I find it a little ironic, and I did post this on X today, I find it a little ironic. If you take a step back, you go, wow, the future five members are suing their existing selves in the Mountain West, right? So the five schools that are going to be PAC schools, supposedly here in 2026, are are suing their current selves. Now, in reality, the, they aren't a part of that pack yet. But as we know, they have been instrumental. They're, they're, they're uh, members in terms of figuring out how they're going to be moving forward. So uh, to, to kind of be ignorant to the fact that they didn't know anything about this or they maybe didn't uh, even ask for it. I think, again, I, I think your head is in the stands is in the sand. Certainly, they, they've been a part of this. They're not a part of that litigation yet other than they're a member of the Mountain West. 
just ironic to me, right? So I had to throw that out there. I did ask our friend of the show, David McKenzie, who's been following the FSU ACC lawsuits, to maybe look at this a little bit further. I know he he posted briefly today. I have invited him on the show. Um, and he said, uh, you know, he, he was getting through all of the details. He said the penalty piece, uh, there, there could be something there with that. You know, this this antitrust law type of stuff, you see that in all of this all of these contracts, you know, they all like to, to spout off this antitrust law. And it depends on the attorney you want to listen to, whether or not that's going to hold water or not. But as you know, what we talk about here, this is all about a settlement. This is all about the, at least for this uh, litigation, the PAC poaching penalty of which is $55 million right now, them trying to get that reduced. Now, along with that, there's the exit fee that the schools are going to be paying. It's about $17 million each per the bylaws, but it's also another five and a half million dollars per school because of this agreement very interesting to see if maybe the schools somehow are going to attack themselves in their conference I'm not sure how you would do that but that 17 million is actually 22 and a half million because of this agreement we'll see what happens this is in my opinion one of several lawsuits that you're likely going to see because that's what we do we litigate everything I want to talk about briefly here targets of the pack. No news yet on UNLV. My opinion is they're being very smart about this. Take your time. As we have seen, because the Mountain West 8 is now the Mountain West 7, thanks to USU leaving here yesterday, uh, the MOUs that were signed were tied to around the 8. So at the very least, they have to bring up some new MOUs um, and, and have it about seven school members uh, staying, as well as they have new revenue here that they have to figure out. USU potentially is, uh, because of their exit penalties and because of the poaching penalty, they're potentially bringing in tens of millions of dollars in addition to what was in the original MOU. So I'm sure if I'm UNLV, I'm saying, hey, we probably want a little bit more money now. And, and they all could be, be wanting that. So uh, we'll see what happens here with UNLV. I'm, I'm frankly, I'm somewhat impressed that they're taking their time uh, to, to maybe hopefully for them make the right choice. Uh, but we shall see. So other targets here for me, obviously, I think UNLV is at the top of the list. If they're willing to go, obviously, the open invite. We'll see what happens there with that. Texas State has been rumored to have interest from the pack. And then obviously, you've, I, I, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, the gonzaga Yukon combination where Gonzaga uh, uh, joins for everything and UConn is football only to kind of round that out. That might be third on the list here for them. I've heard some rumorings about uh, Hawaii as well. I I'm doubtful that that will be the case, but we shall see. UNLV is absolutely at the top of the list to be the eighth member of the pack. Let's talk about the Mountain West. Lots of talk today on X about dissolution. I think that's a lot of smoke. Um, and as we've seen here recently, when there's smoke, it's usually just a distraction or people deciding they want to go off on tangents. I did put an, uh, an X out, a tweet out that really laid out what the dis dissolution looks like. Um, and so if you're interested in, in seeing a little bit more detail on that, check us out on X. Uh, I'm at TBM underscore JY. You can see my some of my posts from today. I, I get a little more um, loosey-goosey on there sometimes, a little more emotional at times, but I do like to stay with facts as well, and I did put that out here uh, earlier today. I want to make it very clear, because I talked about what it would take to dissolve the conference. It's going to take nine votes, and everybody says, well, what about Hawaii? They're not an, a voting member. That's true, they're not, but they need 75% of their membership to dissolve. Well, 8 of 11, everybody, is 72%. It doesn't meet the threshold. They need 9. Hawaii is, is irrelevant, quite frankly, because whether it's 12 members or 11 members, they still need 9 votes to dissolve. So 9 is what they need. Everything that I'm seeing right now, Wyoming, Nevada, San Jose State, New Mexico, and Hawaii, I know they're not a full member, uh, just look like they're staying together. I mean, we've gone from, you know, the Mountain West 8 to possibly the Mountain West 7. I think at the very least, there's a Mountain West 5. I do think Air Force stays on. Everybody's kind of speculating. They're going to wait and see what UNLV does. I'm not 100% sure that's the case. If you remember, Air Force signed on and was public with signing on, at least from what we heard, before anybody else. They were the first ones out of the gate yesterday, even before USU was leaving, and then the speculation about UNLV. So I, I'm, I'm not on the, um, I'm on the, on the bandwagon, the AF 
is tied to UNLV. I think there's probably uh, six strong members here with with AF. And I think UNLV is uh, clearly, they're they're checking to see what they can do. Um, And they're going to go wherever it suits them best. I think it suits them best in the Mountain West with the payday they could be getting. Um, And, you know, is that four years, five years? Yeah, that's a lot of money for for a few years in the grand scheme of things. But we shall see. There's no need to dissolve this conference at all. To me, they're going to have $100 million plus, regardless of this litigation and settlements and all of that kind of stuff. Because of everything they have in the big numbers that we're talking about, upwards of $150 million, I think they're at $100 million plus easily. Um, this is me reading tea leaves that I haven't even looked at all of the litigation documents yet. Um, we will absolutely be doing that in, in more detail. But I, I, they're going to be getting even more money than what the PAC got as their war chest for this set-aside money. So I, I'm not real concerned that a dissolution, as I said here today, and an X could come out, reporting could come out tomorrow, and it could change. Me reading the tea leaves, looking at what's on in the public domain, and those schools that I mentioned to you, Wyoming, Nevada, San Jose State, uh, New Mexico, Hawaii, you haven't heard from them at all. They're just signing it. They're, they're staying together. Um, they're, there's no smoke around them, and I really don't think Air Force has a, a lot of smoke other than just all of this stuff that's always been said about the AAC and all of this kind of stuff. So that's just me speculating on that. Targets for the Mountain West, we've talked about this a lot. Texas State, you know, I mentioned them with the PAC. I, they have to be a target for the Mountain West. I don't know who gets them. I don't even know if they're interested in leaving the Sun Belt. Wouldn't surprise me at all if they're not. But if they are gettable, let's try and get them Mountain West. Um, also, as you all know, New Mexico State, UTEP, Easy ads for me. Uh, there, It has been said that both FCS and FBS schools have already reached out to the Mountain West. I would not be surprised at all that both New Mexico State and UTEP have already had discussions with the Mountain West. And for all we know, that could be the, some of the next news to drop this, uh, this coming week or two once they get everything figured out uh, on their ends. But I think those two schools are easy ins uh, for the Mountain West if they want them. You know I'm big on Sac State. Anyone that heard us before, I'm big on Sac State. It helps kind of replace some of that loss with Fresno. It's uh, it'd, be, it'd be a good partner there with uh, San Jose State. I like them. I know I see ups and downs on on them, uh, and you're going to have that kind of with any FCS school. I get it, but I really am high on Sac State, and I'm high on the Montanas. I just don't know if they're ready to go yet. Everybody brings up that five million dollars from FBS to FCS. I just mentioned $100 million here that the Mountain West may have. They will pay that $5 million for two or three schools, especially if your name is Montana or Montana State. I have no doubt about that. So uh, with that, the only other ones I want to bring up, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were talking new schools. I think Weber State is interesting now. I I was down on them because they were too close to USU. Well, USU is now gone. If you want to get back in that Salt Lake City-ish area of Utah, Weber State might be somebody you want to take a look at at least. I don't know if there's interest, but that would be a good area. I've mentioned Tarleton State before down in in, uh, Texas. And I would also add, at school we haven't talked about, I would look if there's interest into Sam Houston State. They have moved up quickly. And, you know, you kind of look at JMU and see what they have done. They've moved up quickly. They've done it the right way. And JMU is only going to continue to grow. Don't you want one of them in your conference, Mountain West? Sam Houston State might be a good get right here. Not for today, but for a few years from now. So let's let's try and get two, uh, two Texas schools. We've talked about that a lot. I'm talking Texas State. I'm talking UTEP. I'm talking Sam Houston State. I'm talking Tarleton State. There's options to get into Texas. Let's do it, Mountain West. And as you guys know, I'm going to take a breath. We follow everything on the pack and on the Mountain West. This breaks JY's heart because I have become a pack fan through all of this, through everything they went through a year ago. We followed them. Steve has said many a times we're beaver believers and coog lovers or whatever we call it. Um, and you all know I'm a Mountain West cheerleader. I love the Mountain West schools. I'll still love them as they leave, um, but it's breaking my heart. Uh, you know, you I have talked about a premier Western conference. We need a premier Western conference. I know people of the pack are going to be like, it's us. Okay, you're an eight or nine team conference. If we could emerge this sucker into a nice, awesome 14 team conference, 
That is the premier conference. Yes, you have some at the top. Yeah, you have some at the bottom. And you got people that float in between. Look at the SEC. Look at the Big Ten. They've got the same thing. Look at what Rutgers and Indiana are doing this year. They're not going to be great every year, but they're pretty damn good this year. And we talk about that all the time on the Big Mountain. So, hey, I had to do another update. We thank you guys for watching. We'll stay on this live episode tomorrow night. We're going to do the Big Ted picks. We're going to do the Mountain West picks. We're going to do the Pack picks. And with my picks, I take all of my emotions out and I pick winners. And we're going to make you guys money if you're betting or if you just want to hear where we're at with our predictions. Come follow us and make sure you join us tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. I guarantee you we're going to be talking about the pack in the Mountain West after we do our picks. We'll start with our picks and then we'll have a discussion. And my buddy Steve Y will be here in studio live with his buddy JY. And we're going to have a lot of fun and he's going to keep me calm because I'm all kinds of excited right now. With that, hey, we thank you guys for watching. Like this video. Subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.